Hey everybody, welcome back to Level Up Loaded by Boom Say Facts. Actually, hold on. Okay, y'all, so I am back. Aren't you guys proud of me? I just came back in from a poetry event that was amazing. Um, it was, I want to say five poets um, that performed on open mic. So fun. It's something that I really like doing. Um, something that's helping me to reestablish my hobbies and the things that I enjoyed because you know as an adult a lot of times we lose that we really do and I'm trying to find the stuff that I lost because a lot of the things that I lost from childhood were the things that I loved about myself were the things that made me well-rounded and dope as hell so I'm just trying to rediscover that um, and whenever I have a, the energy and today's Wednesday, so like, that's typically when I start to balance out, you know, that hump day. I'm like, not so tired from the weekend, not adjusting to waking up. This is like the perfect little sweet spot within the week um, so where I actually have the energy to do stuff outside of work, come home, go to bed. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was really nice. I definitely enjoyed myself. Um... Uh, something that I wanted to quickly tap into that I talked about, well, not talked about, something that I want to quickly tap into that I was made aware of today. I was watching some other YouTubers video and it was actually in regards to the Ready to Love franchise and she was just saying how a certain woman that is on the Ready to Love franchise was very much a competitive spirit and how she, you know, said everything in life is a competition. And I could not relate, guys. But it triggered me because I know people like that. And for myself personally, those are people who I have I have tried and tried and tried to be in close relationships with. But they are the hardest people to be in relationship with because they literally see everything as a competition. Like they're not playing when they say that, including your your wins that have nothing to do with them. Like y'all don't even have to be competing. Your W's affect them. That is the scariest thing to me because, I mean, first of all, first, I'm a, a competitive person. Like, I'm actually, I think, because of, please don't take this the wrong way, but because of the fact that growing up, I used to be good at everything. Like, I was always very smart. Uh, I wasn't, like, super athletic or anything, so I won't say in that realm. But, like, when it comes to intellect, um, anything creative or intellectually, I was always very, very good at it. So... And still am, because period. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I'm, I've i gotten used to being, you know, the person that was getting all A's in the class and the honor roll every time and the teacher's pet and the standardized testing through the roof. I'm in third grade getting, like, seventh grade scores and things like that. So, for me... Competition is just something that I kind of have never really cared about because for so long I didn't have any. And then when I began to have it, I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> had a good run, <laughs> had a good run. Like, it's being number one is not all it's cracked up to be. As someone who has been number one, please let me tell you, being number one is not all that it's really cracked up to be. People make it seem like so much more than what it is. And that's not to say that I don't want to be successful or that I don't want to be the best in what I do. But when it comes to competing in every realm of your life, that's something that I will never speak over myself. Because I don't want to look at everything that someone has as an L for me. Like, I don't want to be the person that's like, oh, she did this, so I got to do this. Oh, he did that, so I got to do this. Like... I want to be the person that's like, hey, you got W's, I got W's, we good. Like, or, hey, you got W's, I got L's, but I'm still happy for you. 
Like, I don't need that type of energy around me. And um, with a competition like so today, we had the poetry event. And the, you know, of course, for to make it a little bit more appealing, then put the competition um, factor into it, which is never about that for me. Like, honestly, I'm competing with myself. I'm competing with my laziness i'm competing with my mental fortitude making sure that i'm still in a place where i can make something that's beautiful i don't i'm not trying to go up there and say like oh i'm gonna kill him with this one like i'm speaking words that are important to me i'm speaking about issues and things that are important to me i try to put them in a eloquent way but i'm not poetry slam is you know what I mean like and I'm not to say that I can't be or that I wouldn't be at some point but like even if I were I would be doing my best and I would not be trying to beat anyone to me the concept of like trying to make something so competitive it takes all the fun and all the drive out of it for me like Have you ever seen someone who really loves doing something and then they try to make it their career and then they start hating it because it's like, this was my passion. This was something I enjoy doing for fun. This is something I enjoy doing in my pastime, in my free time, in my spare moments. And now I have people bothering me, DMing me about it. You know, Um, I have deadlines. I have quotas. And so it takes all the fun out of it for me. And that's how I feel about competition. Um, So, yeah, I I just really realized that life can be competitive. But in my level of journey, I am comparing myself to myself only. I'm competing with me. I'm competing with the Shay who was in here this weekend, this past weekend, laid in the bed, couldn't move. I'm competing against her. Saturday and Sunday, I was in this bed and did not move from it. And Wednesday, I dressed up, got myself somewhat together and went outside and enjoyed myself and hung around my peers. I was vulnerable. I made a poem within, (laughs) I would say probably like an hour, hour and a half time span before the show and was brave enough to not only perform it once, but they were saying the mic was a little bit low and, and I don't really have that much of a powerful voice. Like, my voice is not a booming voice. And so, I had to perform twice. <laughs> so, not only, I mean, it's all about comfort. You know what I mean? It's all about comfort. So, I had to perform my poem two times tonight. I got a chance to be around people that looked like me, that had messages that were similar to mine, experiences similar to mine. I got a chance to see people who, when I came in the room, was, oh, hey, it's Shay. That means so much to me. And that's one of the things I really do love about Nashville, too, because, like, Nashville is a big little city, like, and I just love it. Like, it's a little big city. It's a big little city. It's a small world. You might see me in this circle because, you know, I'm really into, like, the live music uh, thing. So, you might see me at the live music thing. Like, oh, hey, that's Shay. And I might see you. I'm not really that good with names. I ain't going to hold you. But I be knowing who it is. Um, Or you might see me at the poetry. Oh, that's Shay. I'm going to speak. We're going to speak to each other. We're going to, you know, build networks and bonds. And then I have other friends who are in other rooms that I'm not in and then those connections come together like I love that about here because coming from Chicago which is don't get me wrong Chicago is a small town too like it's a big city but it's a small world <laughs> for sure but that camaraderie and that like close knitness in groups I have never really experienced it and it's so dope to come into a room and everybody just like, hey, Shay, like, <laughs> for me, <laughs> for me, okay. No, but honestly, um, I'm sorry, I got off track. 
but yeah i really really enjoyed myself tonight and um i'm just trying to get myself back on track like from all these struggles from these life struggles i'm getting updates about my grandma things are up things are down things are up things are down i'm just trying to center myself and get myself into a headspace a good headspace where i'm okay regardless where i am okay with what life throws at me good bad and ugly where i'm okay and i'm able to be strong for the other people in my life that might need me but also okay with being weak and being vulnerable and being not okay for a spell i'm finding out how it feels to be this is the first time since i moved away where me being away really hit you know um i've been here for two years and very little change <laughs> it's like two years and like what two weeks or so maybe a little bit no no i'm lying two years and a month oh, actually yeah and so you know in those two years you know for the most part my, all my family have been good no, no real health scares no emergencies and within this last couple of weeks have been the first time where it has been extremely emergent and things have been happening back home that i personally have actually felt like damn this is what it is when you move away you know this is the first time that i've had to feel it and in this time it has been very frustrating um to say the least very frustrating but it has also very much strengthened my faith and helped my relationship with god my prayer life just i want to be speaking life over my family just because I'm not in their presence at the moment does not mean that I don't care about their well-being I don't care about them getting home safely I don't care about them waking up I make sure that I cover them you know with my prayer and with my relationship with God and so it has been a blessing in that way but I will honestly say that it's been a little hard with being away from home in this time and I wouldn't change it for anything and you know even talking to my grandma this past weekend not the past weekend whatever y'all know I was there a couple weeks ago um my grandma had a scare just in case you didn't know um but being there and talking to her like she wouldn't change it either you know like she was happy that she was able to see me but she's happy that i'm happy and that i'm out exploring and not just stuck in chicago or that i didn't feel like i had to just stay in chicago and she's proud of me and that's something that i really really love and i'm so happy and grateful for because it means something to me uh, <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> but yeah um it's been the first time that I've really felt it. And this is a part of the healing process. This is a part of the upward movement. This is a part of the growth. You know, you have to be able to deal with these emotions and these situations in an eloquent way. And I'm doing my very, very best to be able to handle them. And I'm hoping that I'm doing okay. <sighs> Just breaking down barriers and not being overly competitive. I don't want to see women. I don't want to see my fellow woman as competition for me. Like, I want to be happy for you when you win. I want you to be happy for me. I want us to piggyback off each other. I want your wins to catapult me into my win. I want my win to help you get some more intel for your win. Like, that's the type of life I want to live. But I have come to the realization that I can't expect me from other people and I need to know how to operate and move through this life knowing that there are some people who are like that like everything's a competition everything is a race everything is a comparison and I can't personally relate to that and I'm not going to change not for it's not for me
at all. I'm hoping that as you guys go through your level up journey, that you are finding true tribes, people who love you, who are there to celebrate you, who are not trying to one-up you, who are not trying to compete with you, who only use their experiences as a helpful tool for you and not as a comparison and not as a deterrent to your dreams. I want you to not listen to naysayers. I want you to not listen to uh, scarcity mindsets that might not be unintent. They might be unintentional with their advice. Don't internalize it. You cannot take advice from people who are scared. They have the worst advice. Scary people have the worst advice. You will never get anywhere. You will never do anything if you continue to listen to people who are scared to move, scared to change, scared to fail. I got people in my corner who know the ills ain't nothing but the path to the real w because the more l's you take the more knowledge you have so i implore you this week and every week after this to take a look around at the circle that you keep take a look around at the people who you're taking advice from including me because baby i'm not scared okay i'm not scared it's stuff out here that i'm i that i do and have done i am not scared I might be uncomfortable at times. I might have to fight through it. I might have an anxious moment, but I'm not scared to move. I am here and I am taking up space. And I implore you guys to do the same. And I implore you guys to get people around you that do the same. It is the only way to really and truly thrive. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.